just got back from East Coast Tour, Element Optics, Competition and Hunting Tour. Literally ran this thing on probably half a dozen different air guns, crossbows. We were chasing turkeys through the, the mountains and the woods and back into the snowy north of Michigan. So let's check it out. So I had this great game plan that basically I was going to spend pretty much the last half of April and the first half of May uh, on a competition and a hunting trip all across the East Coast, starting off in Michigan, heading all the way over to New Hampshire, back down to Virginia, over to West Virginia, and then back up to Michigan. And I'll tell you what, it's, it was an awesome journey. So this is going to be a pretty long video because there were some pretty epic highs and some pretty epic lows. <laughs> but in this video today, I really want to use this as an example of showing you all the ways that I was able to use the element optics and even talk about some of the new element optics that are coming out and how that's going to help us as hunters and specifically kind of take a look at um, how really element optics helps me perform at my top level in the competition side. It also is probably the only thing that did not go wrong in the hunting woods was my element optics performed flawlessly where pretty much everything else went wrong. So first off, we headed over to Northeast Airgun Classic, drove from Michigan to New Hampshire. It was a 16 hour drive. So along the way, I stopped at Niagara Falls, spent the night there. Headed over to the actual Springfield Armory. So the reason why I was doing that is I've got an upcoming series here at Up North Air Gunner calling it the origin series, where we go over the origins of the military doctrine that helped set the stage for the marksmanship practice and, and competitions that we do today. So I was able to actually uh, interview the historian there, which was really awesome. So stay tuned for that series. From the Springfield Armory, we went up to the Sig Sauer Academy up in New Hampshire. And I'll tell you what, the Northeast Air Gun Classic, this was their first year ever doing it. And they pulled off a flawless competition. It was so much fun. There were some cool new events that have never been done before. So this was the first competition of the year, and I'm still knocking a lot of rust off. I barely got, was able to get out and shoot it all this winter. We had tons of snow, too cool to really get out. So this was really my first chance of getting out and really doing any shooting. So I did bring my PRS gun, got it all tuned up. I just hadn't practiced at all with it, so I chose just to compete in the bench rest. And... I really want to cover today some of the things that we have been learning about bench rest competition. Specifically, I've been learning about bench rest competition that I want to share with you all to help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. And I actually even saw some of the best shooters that I know made some pretty massive mistakes in this competition. And it really all has to do with the clarity of your optics and being able to identify those shots on paper. And I know that sounds like it should be the easiest thing in the world that you've got 25 targets on your scorecard, and you only need to put one hole in each one of those 25 targets. But I'll tell you what, with magazine changes and trying to read the wind and picking your, you know, your series across the board, you want to go up and down, left and right, and staying consistent with your technique, a lot can go wrong. You know, you got to refill your gun, you change the magazine. You start throwing in some environmental conditions like a biblical downpour, mistakes start happening. I'm sick. In the rain. Northeast Air Gun Classic, baby, 2023. Perfect conditions. I would have it no other way. Now this is the Northeast. What do you call these up here? These are these like pissers or something like that? <laughs> or is it pissas? Pissa. 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 <laughs> Look, so for me, I'm 47 years old. I typically wear my glasses more times than not. My vision is not the greatest thing ever. So do I really rely on the brightest and clearest optic that I can have access to? And for me, uh, up to this point has been the Element Titan. And this scope for me allows me to see my 30 caliber holes on paper all the way out at 100 yards, even through torrential downpours. But really where it sets itself apart is being able to see some of these really difficult target hits. So what I mean by that is, yeah, if you center punch the X, that can be kind of hard. But there's other areas on the scoring target that can be equally as hard to see that hole. The dreaded eight ring. Okay, so a lot of these competition targets are using a darker blue or dark gray eight ring. And if you 
center punch, uh, the number, or even get in there in the into the dark part of that circle, sometimes that contrast where your hole is, you just cannot see that. Another one is if you can center punch out one of the numbers that are in the scoring rings, that hole at 100 yards can look like the number nine. You can barely tell the difference between the number nine or a 30 caliber pellet hole. So with the element Titan, I was pretty darn sure that those were holes and I basically continued my series, did a couple magazine changes, finished my card flawlessly. So look, I'm still relatively new at competitive shooting. This is my only my fourth major. Um, I have now gone back to back finals in back to back top 10. And I owe a lot of that to the Element Optics lineup. And so going forward, though, I'm going to be switching over to the new Theos because I was watching Matt Dubber shoot that on the uh, the bench rest line and he let me look through the scope. Man, I'll tell you what, the additional magnification and clarity and just the crispness and the brightness of that glass, it's going to be able to take my competition shooting level to the next level because up to this point, I've been having to use a uh, spotting scope in front of me just to verify all my holes on my target. So the more uh, videos you watch of this guy, you learn how to do this better. So pay attention to Gross Bear because you could actually learn how to shoot bench rest. Thank you, man. <laughs> so in all seriousness, if you really want to study how to read wind, how to shoot bench rest with air guns, go subscribe to Russ Bear's channel because he's a great resource to the air gun community. He publishes all of his videos showing with his wind flags and picture in picture video of his shooting technique. I have learned a ton from watching his videos, so definitely check that out. And a huge shout out to Justin Welch, who was running the Theos, took the top spot in the PRS competition. Man, I'll tell you what, that dude put on an absolute clinic out there. And in first place, Big fat $5,000 check going to Mr. Justin Welch. So huge shout out to Justin Welch and uh, yeah, running that Theos, I'm telling you, I'm sold. It is a very top tier uh, optic, but it's worth it. When you've got money on the line and you've got points on the line like that, basically I'm just going to be running the best glass possible. So, all right, so we've got the Northeast Airgun Classic out of the way, but this entire tour, I have been thinking about turkey hunting and also the lethal air hunt that I go on every year. We're going to talk a little bit more about the lethal air hunt, but it's spring and I've got turkey fever. All right, so we just wrapped up the banquet, uh, hit the road, um, heading to Virginia to do some turkey hunting. I had not even changed my clothes yet, and I've got an eight hour drive, eight hours and 20 minutes to my hunting spot and I'm gonna drive straight through and I am gonna be in the turkey hunting woods wearing my Utah Air Guns jersey with my first light camo over the top of it. Yeah, I'll be in the turkey hunting woods first thing in the morning. All right, on the road again, here we go. So I went out with the Crown Mark II Air Gun, the Iraq Veteran 8888 uh, limited edition. This is the hot rodded model with the tungsten slinging arrows over 400 feet per second. And I've got it topped with the Element Optics uh, Helix HD. So up to this point, I have been hunting a lot with the Element lineup. So I've been actually using the Helix first focal plane scope. Dropped a few deer last year with it, and I love that thing. Now, when I reached out to Matt and Shane and the guys at Element, I said I really loved the Helix, but one of the things I really wanted to see was a second focal plane scope, possibly with, you know, caps turrets, uh, illuminated reticle. And the reason being, a lot of the hunting that I do is 100 yards and in. I really don't need that first focal plane scope. And when Matt and Shane and the guys from Elements showed me this, this will be my go-to hunting optic in 2023 on everything. And so to start off the hunting season, we had turkey hunting. And so in uh, a lot of the East Coast areas, there's this kind of golden triangle of states between Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia that are very air gun hunting friendly. So after the shooting competition, I headed down to Virginia to meet up with my friend, Chad Simon from Lethal Air. And I'll tell you what, Chad and I 
I've been buddies for for quite a few years now. And I'll tell you what, I thought I liked to hunt big game with air guns. Chad is literally the man when it comes to big game hunting. So as a matter of fact, I think he has the world record right now for the largest uh, free range deer uh, with a big bore air gun. So Chad was telling me about all these crazy mountain turkeys that he's got up there and I decided to go down and check these things out. Well, not being in the greatest shape, uh, you know what? I didn't really think about that. But one of the critical things that I learned on this trip is that when you're hunting these mountain turkeys, one, this was on National Forest. And this one bird that Chad was telling me about, it was up on the uh, mountain called Bowers Mountain. So I swear the entire state of Virginia has been hunting this bird ever since opening day. So we're, we're about basically three or four weeks within uh, the turkey hunting season. So this bird has been called to and probably shot at and chased for an entire month. So, you know, this Yankee coming down from Michigan, thinking he's going to be able to get this bird within shooting distance. You know what? I gave him my best shot. I just started using a mouth call this year. Technique is a little bit on the edgy side, you know, kind of still working out some kinks there. But my goal was to see if I can get that bird in close enough for a shot with the FX arrow gun, because this thing right here, ethically speaking, you really should be keeping shots within probably 20 or 30 yards, uh, 30, 40, beyond 40. Turkeys can jump the shot just like deer can jump shots. And so just the sound report of this. And another thing is that the vital area on a turkey is extremely small. The heart and lungs are like this. So ultimately you can either take a neck shot, head shot, or lungs, but all of those, those points of aim are the size of maybe a tennis ball. So getting them within the 20 to 30 yards was super critical. So this was probably one of the most frustrating turkey hunts that I've ever been on, but also probably one of the most physically demanding turkey hunts that I've ever been on because up here in Michigan, it's flat land. We've got like fields and maybe a couple small hills, but that elevation change just whooped my butt. All right, Chad, what just happened, brother? Well, we thought he was at the top, or at least he was. <laughs> and then we came to the top, and he went to the bottom. <laughs> all right, I guess we're going down. All right. So we walked all the way up to the top of that mountain, got to the top, and then we heard him calling down here. So we walked back down. Man, I am so out of breath. Look at my heart rate. That's from when we started walking in the meadow where it's down. Dude, I must have been 140 beats per minute <laughs> at the top. But man, <laughs> I am beat. You've got to be freaking kidding me. All right, let's get back up there. I was way out there, probably about a mile away in a meadow and threw out some calls and I heard him on this side of the ridge. So I threw out some calls, worked my way over there and trying to work your way quietly through that timber like that with all the fallen leaves. It's just crunch, crunch, crunch. And I was going really slow, heel to toe, trying to work my way up. But the best I could get was the base of that tree right there you can see my bag sitting there 
and I'm standing right where that turkey was. That's 80 yards. So I was able to call him off the ridge. He came around like there and he was standing right here. And at 80 yards with the uh, FX arrow gun, that's just way too long of a shot. This, uh, this tool is a 20, 30, or 40 yard weapon. All right, so I was able to chase that elusive bird for a couple days with Chad. I was able to get him in sight, so my calling is good enough to at least get that turkey within 100 yards. If I would have had my FX Impact M3 35 cal, I would have been going home with a beard, but I didn't, and so I just could not get him in close enough with the arrow gun. But it was time to go on to the Lethal Air Hunt. So the Lethal Air Hunt is a really awesome event that happens every year, and uh, up to this point, it's been in West Virginia at the Mountain Meadows uh, Hunting Preserve. And yes, it's a ranch hunt, hunt. So a lot of companies in the air gun sector actually launched new products at the Lethal Air Hunt. Or it's the first time that we've been able to see some of the new products that were uh, released at SHOT Show being used in a in a hunting um, environment. And so I look at the Lethal Air Hunt, even though it's a ranch, it's kind of like the proving grounds for me to run through some of the new equipment, some new you know arrows and broadheads and different big bore air guns and different arrow slinging uh, air guns. I use this as a time to really kind of get a good sense of what I want to run for the rest of the hunting season because I'm hunting all the way into the into the fall. So my big hunting really starts up pretty much in like September and runs through the end of the year. So so being able to see this new gear at the Lethal Air Hunt was absolutely awesome. So the first thing we were able to do is actually this was super fun. There were some hunters there that had never hunted with big bore air guns. And they were out on their very first hunt. So I was able to catch this one on video, which kind of got us into a bigger conversation about some optics that are coming onto the market from Element. But check out this long range shot. Right at 100 yards to that road. Big one in the front. Man. There you go. Come right. Come right. Right there. Right there. Up in the oh, tree line. A, oh, up in the tree. There's another one. That one a little lower? Yep. Yeah. He's bar Bro, dude, that is what I'm talking about. That is a hundred yard shot. The uh, 58 cal, Mr. Hollow Point, was recovered from that pig on the far side in the hide. Look at that. Pure awesome. Right there, boy. <laughs> What a shot. So that shot with that 58 caliber Mr. Hollow Point slug, I'll tell you what, I have taken some long shots like that on big game animals. And when you're shooting big bore air guns, they're extremely loopy in trajectory. I mean, some big bore air guns shoot down to like 650 feet per second up to maybe 900 feet per second. And so you're shooting really heavy lead. I mean, so... Up to this point, a lot of the optics that we've been running in the big bore air gunning side of things for big game, we've had to rely on just typical, you know, optics that are out there, typical glass with typical reticles. But Element Optics has come out with the Hyper 7, and I honestly think for big bore game, I really think that this new optic is going to be a game changer. One, there's a lot of technology baked into this thing. But one of the things that I'm super excited about is the way that it compare with a laser rangefinder. And the reason why that's super important with big bore air guns and big game hunting is when you're taking shots, maybe say 75, 85, 100, 125, 150 yards, your projectile is just plummeting out of the sky. And so being able to range to your target and have your scope give you a suggested point of aim that's probably going to be pretty darn close within that kill zone because, you know, ethical kill zone on a deer, you know, pretty big. But sometimes when you're out there, you know, you know, don't have time to range to that deer. Was it 100? Was it 115? Was it 120? That difference can be like the entire body of the deer as far as how much that projectile is dropping. So, so being able to range to your game animal and have all this data baked into that optic, I honestly think the Hyper 7 is going to be a definite go-to optic for the 2023 hunting season. So definitely check that out. So really the Lethal Air Hunt is this annual event where all these different manufacturers are coming there. And obviously I was there uh, representing FX and Element Optics. But, you know, I'll tell you what, when we can all get together as friends within the industry, 
some pretty cool collaborations come about. And I absolutely love hanging out with the guys from Benjamin uh, Air Guns. I'm here with my buddy, Sean. And uh, Sean is the proud winner of the Element Optics giveaway when i hit 30,000 subscribers and sean is an awesome awesome contributor to the uh, to the air gun industry so you hang out with the, uh, that that rick ream guy quite a yeah, bit don't you I do come yeah. on man Whoa! <laughs> come on man come on man <laughs> all right bro so i expect you to put that on a gun and i want you to beat rick all right okay all right man congratulations thank you all right and Every year, they bring some pretty big heat to this event. But this year, they brought it, and they brought it big time with the new Benjamin Airbow M600. As far as I know, I think this is the most powerful aero-slinging air gun on the market. We popped on the Element Optics Helix HD onto that M600, and we were hitting bullseyes out to 100 yards. So we're at 70 yards now. You're going to hold two lines, right? Yep. Yeah, I drive by and you're... There we go. Bullseye? Bullseye. Two line hold on the Raptor reticle at 70. Oh yeah, center ring. Center ring. Oh man, we've got that element. Helix HD, perfectly dialed in at 6.5 magnification, 50 yard zero, 50, 60, 70 on the lines, now to 100, holding at the very top of the black bar. And being able to show them how to tune or true up that reticle to that much velocity, carrying that much energy out there, it was absolutely so much fun hanging out with those guys. But we wanted to test the true power and lethality of that M600. So Thorn Broadheads has been a sponsor of Up North Air Gunner for quite a few years, and I've taken quite a few deer and different animals with the Thorn. So what was really cool about this hunt is they've actually come out with the new XV, which is a different opening, uh, kind of caught on contact mechanical that actually uses, instead of a plunger, it's actually using the, um, the pressure of hitting the game animal to deploy the blades. So what was really awesome, and one, I wanted to test it with the M600 to see what kind of penetration we were going to get. But what was really interesting is we were able to do a direct comparison to a hunt last year that we did on a pig with the original Airbow using the Thorn Rift 2.2. So my theory was that we were going to get a lot more penetration in this year's hunt. And the reason being two things. One, you've got a massive amount of velocity. Um, the original Airbow is 450 feet per second, and the new one is 600. So you're gaining an, an additional 150 feet per second. So that right there, a lot more energy on, on impact. Running a 2.2 inch diameter cutting it, I think it was a little bit on, on the big side, especially for a pig. For a white-tailed deer, thinner skin, easier pet to penetrate, absolutely the right choice. But with a pig, I'll tell you what, man, you get into up into that upper part of the, you know, the plate, then there's just that, that skin. It's really taunt, and it's just baked and caked and mud. Into that, it just stops. And getting through that, getting into the vitals can often be really difficult. And last year's shot... You can see that Thorn Rift 2.2, it saved me because of the massive hatchet slashing wound, but it only probably only went in about this far. So that absorbed so much of that energy. But this year we've got the M600, but also the new broadhead. It's a little bit narrower in cutting. So this one's two inches. And so my theory was we're going to get pretty good penetration. So we headed out. <laughs> Check this out. Was what right about here yep right here on this edge so the arrow's got to be somewhere i mean they were still carrying a lot of energy i saw it like blow through so it's got to be here somewhere oh dude oh yeah see it? right there see it sticking oh. in the ground <laughs> Oh, 
How far is that? That's that's got to be a hundred yards, man. Oh, look at the pull out, guys. Look at the trajectory. So, look at that. Pull it out. Oh man, absolutely wicked. Sweet. Nice. Got a little blood on there on the fletch. Nice work, brother. Upward angle shot. It was perfect shot placement right behind the shoulder. So the entry is on the back side there, but that's the, uh, that's the exit. And those thorns, two inch diameter cutting, just did a number. Double lunged them, didn't go 20 yards. So the M600 definitely proven in a new thorn, uh, cut on contact, expandable broadheads. Love those things. And just blew oh, right through that nice. animal. That's the exit right there. Sweet. Congratulations, bro. M600. Hell yeah. And we popped it off the uh, Benjamin M600. We put it back on this gun. And I wanted to go out and I wanted to find the biggest pig I could find on the ranch for some penetration testing. And I wanted to get to about a 30-yard shot just to kind of see what kind of penetration we were getting because I was testing these brand new broadheads from Helix called the Helix FJ4s. So this FJ4 is a four blade uh, broadhead. So it's got um, a single bevel main two blade with two bleeder blades. And this thing was 225 grains. So a little pro tip and all the testing that I've done across all these different aero slingers, across a lot of different manufacturers and a lot of different power levels. So one of the things that we have found is that if you are using an aero slinger that is shooting 400 feet per second and lower, you really want to use the advantage of physics and by using a heavier broadhead and also a narrow cutting. And so when you start throwing big mechanicals, you know, two inch or two plus inch cutting diameter at game animals, when you're below 400 feet per second, um, you can start running into some penetration issues, especially with pigs. So in this test, I ran at 225 grain broadhead and watch what happens to this pig. Wow. All the way down to the fletch. All right, here we go. So those Helix FJ4s with the bleeders at 30 yards went fletch deep right there in the heart. All right, so there's the entry. Good cut on contact. Blew right through the heart. These things are absolutely wicked. So yeah, definitely great penetration on a very huge hog. So I would definitely trust these on a bear, elk, deer, moose, <laughs> any North American large game, these will work. All right, so it did end up poking through right out there the back side. He went down right away. Didn't go 20. <laughs> All right, so we got it done with the uh, FX Crown Iraq Veteran 88, 88 Special Edition. This thing's slinging 400 feet per second, but we put some heavy 225 grain Helix broadheads on that thing and that penetrated it all the way to the back hide of this hog. So, man, I tell you what, those things will get the job done on any big game animal. So I'm super sick, but we're wrapping it up here at the Lethal Air Hunt. Had a lot of fun. We were able to run the Element Optics Helix HD. So that was just a 30 yard shot. I had just a one line hold on it, but man, just drilled them right in the heart. This scope right here can get tuned to absolutely anything. Bring it home the bacon, baby. Yeah. So there again, uh, you can use physics to your advantage, running heavier broadheads with those lower power air guns. So again, yeah, this is a pretty hot rotted FX, but you have to remember, this isn't a big bore air gun. This is actually meant to be like a 177, 22, 25, or 30 cal that's been converted to an arrow slinger. It, it, this is not a big bore air gun that's been, you know, made to throw arrows. So even at, you know, 300 to 400 feet per second in the bolts that we use with the FX are actually a little bit on the lighter side as it is anyway. So when you pair those two things together, running a heavier broadhead with something like this, but once we start getting above that 400 feet per second, especially with deer, um, you can start using those bigger mechanicals. And I've seen in the past with like 400 feet per second crossbows, no problem, full pass-throughs on deer with even the biggest 2.2 uh, cutting rifts. There's a quick tip, but man, I'll tell you what, that pig was enormous. 
Absolutely huge. I think probably maybe a little bit bigger than the one that I got last year. So actually, he's at the taxidermist right now doing a European mount. So he'll be on that side, hopefully, in an upcoming video. Then after the pig hunt, headed out for turkey, back at it, uh, going after these turkey. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, frustrating, but a uh, couple unforced errors on this one. We'll go over that, but let's check it out. We've been hearing turkeys up here in this in this area for the last two days. There's a tom right there, about 200 yards out. We're gonna try to skirt around him here. He is way out there. All right, let's see if we can. All right, so you can see right here, there's a piece of equipment that's still in my backpack that I probably should have deployed instead of still calling to that bird because I saw him out there about 200, 250 yards. He couldn't see where we were in that, in that tree line yet, but instead I should have stopped, taken out my Nukem mobile blind, popped that thing up, and because those turkeys, man, once they start getting within 100 yards, their vision, they can see every bit of movement. They can, if you're skylined and then you've got nothing behind you, they can, they will pick you like you will not believe. And that's exactly what happened with this turkey. He got right within steps of me being able to take an ethical shot. I really wanted to get him within 25 to 30 yards. He was just probably 10 steps away. And he picked me just easy. I was, I was behind a log, but I was not concealed. Man, if I would have just stopped and deployed that Nukem blind like I know I should have, I would have been taking home that turkey. But he saw me, did an about face, headed out in the distance. And I just sat there and called to that bird. Thinking he was going to do an about face and he wanted no part of that. So that's how the uh, Virginia, West Virginia uh, hunts uh, basically ended for me. I uh, didn't have uh, any more time to chase turkeys down there. So I needed to head back up to Michigan because my tag here in Michigan, I actually got into a lottery and I got the second week of the turkey season. So it really only gave me a seven day window and I was already day one or day two into it as I was still down in uh, Virginia and West Virginia. So I hustled home and took the Helix HD off of the FBX and actually mounted this onto two different crossbows. Um, now I put it onto the Raven R500 and this thing is an absolute lane thrower of a crossbow. So with that, it was very similar to the M600, the Benjamin M600. So I kind of knew where to start with the tuning and the, the truing process of the scope. But once I got on there, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I headed out, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> these turkeys in Michigan, I mean, at this point, I was kind of hunting at a level of frustration. So if you've been hunting uh, as long as I have, you know when you start hunting in a frustrated state of mind, it's probably best just to slow down and take a breather, but I just, I wanted to get a turkey so bad. I was seeing turkeys almost every single time I was out. I was hearing them gobble. I was roosting them perfectly. I just could not get them within that kill zone of 20 to 30 yards. I mean, if I had like a Benelli 12 gauge, I could have easily gotten any one of these birds, but getting them within that 20 to 30s was critical. So um, where I'm hunting this farm permission that I've got, it's actually really cool. There's a lot of undulation and a lot of um, peaks and valleys and hills. 
using kind of like a Native American spot and stalk uh, style to get close to these birds. So a lot of times I will see, you know, a tom out there with a couple of hens and I can basically use the elevation to either get around them, close to them, where they cannot see me. But if they see you at all, they will bolt. So if there's two hens in a field and that tom, that tom is focused on mating. But those hens, man, they their heads are on a swivel. And if they see any movement, they will just run. And when they run, they literally look like dinosaurs. Look at the wheeling uniform direction changes, just like a flock of birds evading a predator. So this next one is so frustrating. I literally low crawled, I'm not exaggerating, 100 yards to get within 60 yards of this tom and these two hens. So I got a bearded bird. I can't tell how big he is, but he's out there with two hens. And uh, he sits 60 yards away. Let's see if I can do this without spooking him. All right. right there. It was perfect, absolutely perfect. They totally screwed it up. Got within 60 yards. They crested the top of this hill. And on the top of the hill, it was pretty steep on the other side. And so when they got to the other side, I was able to close that distance. I was able to get from 60 down to probably 30, maybe even 20 when they were on the steep side of the back side of that hill. The problem was when I peeked up over that hill, those one of those hens saw me, look out hen, saw me and she just bolted and that tom took off after them and by the time i got up there with my sight picture that tom was just hauling butt and he was probably 60 75 yards away so the spotting and stalking technique though i was seeing birds and getting close it just wasn't working i didn't want to spook out all these birds either so gave it another day but of course give it one more day in michigan and it started freaking snowing i mean when i say snow it snowed like six inches like in two hours absolutely dumb wet cold so this time i was smart i learned my lesson i set up my nuke and blind i was perfectly still and i basically really softly called in these these weather conditions those birds really aren't all that active those toms are not in the field you know on full display like they normally are when it's sunny so I just kind of held tight and right after dawn, sure enough, I had a Tom and two Jakes off to my right, probably about 150 yards away. I threw out just a few soft clucks and man, they just came right in. Absolutely perfect. I mean, they were absolutely walking to my location, just absolutely walking right at me. And I knew this was it. Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay I mean, that Raven R500, I had it all set up the night before. I actually changed out the knocks. I put on some lit knocks because I wanted it to look good on video for you guys. And that's where I screwed up because pro tip and huge safety tip with these high power crossbows. Do not, and I repeat, do not change out your knocks. Don't mess with the knock system that comes with the Ravens or really or the 10 points or any of them. Don't mess with this because I introduced a very unsafe condition by putting on that lighted knock and I was not aware of it until I pulled the trigger. Yep, it just blew up on me as I was taking a shot. On a tom, god dang it. <sighs> Sound like an explosion. I knew immediately, immediately. I, I could see it, you know, I could still see it. That, that arrow was just zigzagging all the way. I saw parts flying off. I knew something catastrophic had gone wrong. Um, I just didn't know what. And I saw the, the bird jump up. I thought it might have hit it. I couldn't tell. Then he went back to eating. I held really still because I did not want to spook those birds, but and just went back to eating and walked away like nothing ever happened. So I went back and reviewed the footage, and sure enough, that fatal mistake of the night before of me changing out my knocks is what caused that catastrophic failure on this arrow. It could have probably ended up even worse than it did. I could have gotten hurt. I could have wounded an animal. 
but luckily I did not. So I went out to find that arrow because I actually wanted to find, you know, did it, did it split um, the carbon fiber or was the, you know, the knock was, you know, God knows where, but I wanted to go find that arrow to see what happened. And it just went from bad to worse and absolutely funny. Check this out. All right. So there's my shooting position there, right there. Let's see if we can find that arrow. You've got to be kidding me. Well, You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and that's what happens when a crossbow explodes and your arrow goes all wonky. Well, I collected most of it up. He still has probably another three inches left. So, that is the most crazy hunting story I think that I will ever have. Having my crossbow blow up as I'm shooting at a turkey. That arrow zigzagged all the way there. And I took off his beard. <laughs> so, there it is, everybody. That's how my turkey season ended. I had a absolute blast the only thing that did not fail for me the entire month the hunting and competitive shooting was my element optics everything else went wrong but i had an absolute blast i learned a lot of lessons i hope you learned something along the way on this a couple big takeaways with turkeys if you're hunting them in the mountains you want to get above them in an elevation use the nuco blind do not and i repeat do not think those turkeys are not going to see you they will see you that nuke and blind is basically your invisibility cloak. Use that every chance you possibly get. And lastly, if you live in a state where it's not legal to use the air gun arrow slingers like it is here in Michigan and I got to use a crossbow, just be very mindful about learning about your arrow system and, and contact Pyramid Air because they are absolute experts on this stuff. And if I would have reached out to, to them and talked to them about the different knocks that I could use and things like that, they would have told me absolutely do not change the knock system on your crossbow bolt. So huge shout out to Tyler and all the guys over there at Pyramid Air because I reached out to them after all this happened and they explained to me what I did wrong. So definitely check out Pyramid Air. Those guys are absolute experts on all this crossbow technology. They work directly with all the manufacturers. But I tell you what, I've got that right there to go on my wall of hunting, wall of shame as a reminder to respect your equipment. Hope you learned something, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Huge shout out to Element Optics. That was an absolute fun tour across the East Coast. Everything I was able to use worked amazingly well. We were able to put this on so many different weapons and guns and crossbows. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Gobble, gobble. <laughs>